Oh, God bless you. Thanks be to God. We did it. And we're going to do it again. <laughs> Stephanie, that was an absolutely amazing speech. Thank you so much. It is an honor, and I am proud to stand here with you. Thank you. <laughs> Friends, tonight, your voices were finally heard. The voices of working families, parents, taxpayers, law enforcement, and everyday citizens. Voices from the farms, the suburbs, the city of Chicago, <laughs> and every place in between. Let's hear it up for Chicago tonight. We got anybody here? Uh huh. Right there's how it's going in Chicago. God bless you. Wow. Thank you. This is awesome. Oh, tonight our movement sent a clear message to the establishment and the political elites. We will not be ignored. This primary has been a long journey, but one that we believe is worth every second, every mile, every moment. It's been an amazing journey on this campaign trail. We've driven hundreds of thousands of miles. I got a vehicle at the Ford place just down the road and I can prove it. <laughs> oh, we've listened to thousands of stories from everyday Illinoisans who are looking for leadership that will actually help them live, work, and thrive in Illinois again. We live in desperate times. It's a journey that I could not have traveled without the help of God my loving wife, Cindy. My amazing family. Our thousands of volunteers and supporters all across this state. Our staff and all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cindy and I cannot thank you enough for the support that you've continued to give me and our movement to help clean up Springfield and restore Illinois. That's been the battle cry from the beginning. Now, I do want to take a moment to thank Gary Rabine, Richard Irvin, Jesse Sullivan, Paul Schimpf, and Max Solomon for their efforts during this campaign. I've heard from a few of them already and they have pledged to unite with us to fire Pritzker. Now is the, now is the time to unite and move forward and we will do that, friends. We believe in this movement. We believe in the people of Illinois, and together we will get Illinois back on track. It will happen, friends. <laughs> Illinois is our home. This election is about our future, and this campaign is our fight. Friends, if you'd asked me six years ago if I would ever run for state office, many of you already know what that answer would have been. It was a resounding no. I would have called you crazy. Absolutely not. I wasn't very fond of state politics, and I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. I loved my quiet life on the farm, working with my hands, volunteering in my community, and spending time with my family. I never dreamed that I'd be running for state office. But on July 4th, 2017, that all changed. My state representative at the time started voting for tax increases on working families. I state started to share the truth on Facebook. Thought it was kind of fun to start complaining that way, but look where it got me. 
<laughs> Be careful when you complain on Facebook. <laughs> and many of you out here today, many of our friends began to encourage us to run. So my family and I prayed about it. And eventually I jumped into the race. We were outspent, but we were not outworked. And we won. Throughout this campaign, people have referred to me as a downstate farmer. <laughs> and you know what? They're right. I'm proud to be a family farmer. And I love to remind people what farmers do. They feed the world. Thank you. We get up before the sun comes up. And often we work until after it goes down, and that's certainly the kind of work ethic we're going to need to get Springfield back on track. We fix things that are broken. We solve problems, and we grow things. And as a matter of fact, over 250 years ago, it was a group of farmers who founded and grew the greatest country on the face of this earth. And I think they did a pretty good job. Yes. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be the son of the great state of Illinois. But we're all here because we know that Illinois is in trouble. Decade after decade of mismanagement in Springfield, back-to-back -back billionaire governors who don't understand the struggles of working people. And where has that gotten us? Nowhere. People and businesses, leaving Illinois in droves, looking for work, affordable housing, lower taxes, and better opportunities. They're leaving, they're leaving because Springfield and the political elites have failed every one of us. And now the elites and the press say that Pritzker's a shoe-in. <laughs> You get it. They say our fate's set. That a farmer can't beat a billionaire. Friends, the funny thing is, these same people said that we couldn't win the primary. We were outspent by tens of millions of dollars in the primary. And look what happened tonight. This is how it's done. <laughs> Our movement is growing. When people show up in November, like you showed up tonight, we will win. <laughs> Here's a tip and some advice for J.B. Pritzker. Start packing, friend. Because on November 8th, you're fired. That's what's gonna happen. God bless you. Friends, billionaires like Pritzker can't relate to the struggles of working people and taxpayers like us. It's that simple. You and I have to balance our family budgets. Billionaire Pritzker has never had to. And he's lying to us about the state's budget. Let me share some truth with you. Each of the state's five pension funds have been $4 billion short of what they should be. If he's balancing the budget, well, he's using your retirement money to do it. Pritzker doesn't understand how skyrocketing gas prices and soaring food prices make everyday life harder for Illinois families like you and I. He doesn't understand how his and Joe Biden's extreme national agenda helps fuel inflation and increases utility bills for families like us across Illinois. He doesn't understand the damage that his lockdowns did to small businesses, schools, mental health, and working families all across this state. 
He doesn't understand that his war on police has fueled the war on our streets, making our neighborhoods dangerous all across this state. So dangerous that many parents are afraid to let their kids walk home from school. Friends, we've witnessed that in Chicago. It's coming, friend. It's coming. Help is on the way. <laughs> You've been there with me from the beginning, Mr. Schnauz. Thank you. Pritzker's anti-police and anti-public safety measures like no cash bail are why violent criminals roam free and why no one is safe. Pritzker doesn't understand that his high taxes and burdensome regulations and unfunded mandates are forcing our families, our neighbors, our businesses, including job creators like Boeing, Caterpillar, and others to flee Chicago and Illinois. Maybe the saddest part of JB's record are the 27 veterans who died at the LaSalle Veterans Home. They were heroes, but they were old and vulnerable, and Pritzker failed to protect them from COVID. The list of failures is long, but here's the bottom line. Billionaire Pritzker has deep pockets, but the pockets of the working people, taxpayers, Law enforcement, students, and parents are getting smaller every day. Let me ask you a question. I want to hear what you think. Do you feel overtaxed? Yes! Do you feel overregulated? Yes! Are you tired of being ignored by Springfield? Yes! <laughs> Friends, I hear you because I am you. It's that simple. God could create something like this. God bless you and thank you. To God be the glory for all of this. And he's going to get the glory when we take Illinois back. Thank you. I'm standing for you and I'm standing with you and I can promise you this. I will never waver under pressure. I will never stop fighting for you and the future of our state. But friends, here's the deal. I don't want you to just believe in me. I need you to believe in Illinois. I want you to believe in our future. And when people ask us where we're from, I want you to be proud to say that we are from Illinois. Those days are coming. Our movement has already grown into thousands of volunteers and supporters all across this state, hungry for change and passionate about making Illinois a state that people flock to instead of flee from. It's time, it's time for straight talk, hard work, and common sense solutions. As a farmer, I'm used to rolling up my sleeves and working until the job is done. I know that we can get the job done and get our state back on track. Yes. We will get our budget and our spending under control. Yes. I live on a budget. You live on a budget. Yes. Springfield should live on a budget. Yes. With your help, we will demand a zero-based budget where every department starts at zero and will make a case for every penny spent. <laughs> On day one, we will make sure that law enforcement knows that they have a governor who has their back. <laughs> it's time that we had a governor who supports police 
demands law and order, and fights for safer communities for every Illinoisan. We will begin to restore parental rights by removing extreme policies from our classrooms Day one, CRT was written into the rules. It will be written out of the rules. We will return the power to the parents, and we will make sure that the school boards hear the parents and are responsive to them. Cindy's telling me to take a drink. When I'm governor, we will ensure that parents and children have choices. And that means vouchers, friends. We must have vouchers. We will work to remove unfunded mandates that have increased property taxes and that have driven our children and our grandchildren out of this state. We will work to pass real tax relief and benefits that benefit working families and small businesses. Yeah. <laughs> Something I've been struggling to do but have had no voice as Republicans haven't. We will attract new business here in Illinois. We will spark innovation and we will support existing small businesses all across this state so that we make Illinois grow again. It's time to get Illinois out of the way. It's time to get Springfield out of the way and unleash Illinois' true economic potential. We'll focus on working people and families, not the elites. We can and we will reclaim Illinois for the people. We will restore confidence in our government and we will rekindle prosperity for all. Under a Bailey administration, we will make the government a partner for success instead of a problem standing in the way as it has been. The time is now. The political elites and their self-dealing have had their way for far too long. Now is the time for regular working people like us to have our voices heard. We will take back our government from the political elites and the failed establishment from both parties. And when we win, Springfield will stop trying to control people's lives and start working to make them better. Yeah. Friends, we know J.B. Pritzker will spend a lot of money trying to fool you by telling lies about me. But as an out of touch, trust fund, elitist billionaire, Wasting money and trying to fool working people is actually what Pritzker does best. But the truth is that we know Illinoisans are smarter than his money and his lies. Friends, I have one more question for you. Are we better off than we were four years ago? We're worse. While Pritzker has been governor, the quality of life for Illinoisans has gotten worse while the taxes and costs for basic necessities are almost out of reach. This race is about jobs and crime. And on those issues, voters know that J.B. Pritzker has failed us. The hard work of this campaign is only just the beginning. And I can promise you this. I will work circles around Pritzker. And with your help, we will win again in November. We will. We will reform Springfield and we will restore Illinois. <laughs> Friends, I am humbled that you would come out here tonight. I am humbled at your support, your hard work. Cindy and I thank you all so, so much. God bless you. God bless America and God bless the amazing state of Illinois. It's gonna get better, thank you.